This is Hannibal here from the HannibalTV.com with none other than the beautiful dynamite doll Bronwyn Billington. You look ravishing today. And she's getting married in a couple of years. <laughs> Year and a half, yep. Lucky man. Thank you. Now, I see you got some tattoos there. Could you uh, show us the tattoos on your arm? Those are pretty cool. Yes. Oh, wait, wrong way. Okay, so Jim, I'm an 80s baby. Let's see, there we go. Jim, my little pony. I've, um, it's hard to show, a cat cupcake. I have a bee here. I have a milkshake on the back. <laughs> got all kinds of girly things, makeup brushes. Yeah, some hearts. From Gem and the Holograms. I used to watch that cartoon. Yes. Care Bears, My Little Ponies, Gem. That's, that's my jam. <laughs> I always thought a female wrestler with uh, makeup similar to Gem would get over. That would be incredible. You already have some fans commenting on here. Jeff says the Bulldogs were... Um, his favorite tag team. Everyone was second best after them. I agree. And uh, legendary Dr. Rackpole says Dynamite was the goat. And someone else says, who doesn't love Jen? I actually <laughs> forgot all about Jen until I saw that tattoo. Yeah, I love it. I want to do the whole band for Halloween. That would be awesome. So wrestling's uh, starting back up in Alberta. I see you guys are more open than we are here in Ontario, still on lockdown. Do you have any uh, appearances coming up as a manager? So we just started back last weekend. Last Friday was our first day back. And I just got my second vaccine, literally that day, actually. So I was like, well, I'm going to sit this one out, so I'm probably not going to feel very well. And I do plan on going back as soon as I can. I'm just not too sure. I'm just going to kind of ride it out a little longer until everyone gets their vaccines and stuff. And I'll be back in there hopefully this summer, maybe August. Very cool. Yeah. Scorch is bringing up your father's book. What were your thoughts on, on your father's book? I've read it several times. Pretty interesting stuff. So I haven't read it for a long time. Um, I do want to reread it because I think I'm more mentally ready now. Back when it came out, I had to prepare myself for it. And um, I, I did really enjoy it though, because I could hear my dad's accent and it was really true to his story. So um, that part I will say is the best part about it. Even my mom will agree with that. So, and all his fans say they really like it. So I think that's good. Now, as far as the Dynamite Kid, Dark Side of the Ring documentary, that just came out, I don't know, maybe a month ago, you were in it. Mm -hmm. I saw it. It was probably the best one they did this year. What were your thoughts on it overall? I'm so happy to hear you say that. Um, yeah, I thought it was really well done. We got to watch it. They sent it to us a couple days early. Um, we didn't know that was going to happen, so they emailed it to us. And we're like, okay, let's do this. I watched it, and then they, they wanted us to email them back a reply. And I was like, I needed a few days to just take it in. Um, it was kind of shocking when you see your life or your father's life played out on the screen. Like I've, I'm a big fan of the show. I watch every episode, but seeing my own family and our story on there was, it was a lot to take in. And at first I was like, I don't know how I feel about it. Cause you know, the whole world's going to watch this. Um, but when it came out and I saw everyone's responses, I would say it was like 98% positive on the episode. So I think that we really got our message across and um, yeah, we're just really happy with how it turned out. Scott McGee was on that episode. I interviewed him a couple months ago. What was his relationship like with uh, Dynamite? Because he didn't really talk about Dynamite too much in the interview, but obviously from the documentary, it seems like you, you guys were close. He was close to your family. Yeah, so I actually just connected with him on Facebook after Dark Side came out, so I'd never talked to him before or anything like that, and I didn't really know about my dad's friends. Now that's my mom. Um, she had got him to be interviewed for the episode because she knew what good friends they were. And yeah, just seeing it play out on TV, I'm like, wow, these guys were such good friends with my dad. And that made me so happy to see that there was someone out there that, you know, could shed a tear for him and tell the good stories. And so that, yeah, I really enjoyed seeing him on there. 
Mark would like to know what would Dynamite have thought about AEW's highly acrobatic and athletic style. Of course, your dad started that style, I guess, in some ways. Yeah, I think he would enjoy it. Is that still the uh, the place, ideally, you would want to be a manager if you had the choice? I think so, yeah. That's my favorite promotion right now. We watch it uh, every Wednesday in pay-per-views. And actually, I didn't watch Dynamite was on last night, but we didn't watch it, so I'll have to watch it today. But, yeah, I really enjoy it. Uh, Jonathan oh, wants to know about the rumor that uh, that I guess – I've never heard this rumor. Yeah. <laughs> this guy might be uh, might be full of it that Davy Boy Smith shot Matilda. I don't think so. I think uh, Matilda was like the family dog yeah, of Harry's his, family. His pet off the road, so I don't think he would have done that. Um, <laughs> they fed him a hot dog or two on the road, so I know that's true. It mostly stayed uh, with Davy Boy's family, though, right, when he was off the road? That's right, yeah. I was uh, doing an interview with uh, Tonga Kid, and he was saying that when they beat the Bulldogs, I guess, for custody of Matilda, they, they took it for a while there, and it was a bit of a pain to, ha to have to deal with a dog I'm on sure. the road. <laughs> They're probably like, how do you do this? Yeah. <laughs> but now you have cats. I saw that you had a cat uh, with you. Yeah. How many animals do you have this past? two cats so i got my first cat he's almost seven his name is tiger and so we named him after tiger mask and then i was gonna get my the idea was to get a bulldog and name him dynamite so i wanted tiger and dynamite but after i got my first cat i realized i'm much more of a cat person so i just got a second cat but i, I didn't name him dynamite i feel like it's more of a dog name yeah i've got a dog here uh -huh. she's on my lap right now piper uh -huh. named after roddy piper oh so cute Merge says Dynamite Kid paved the way for so many wrestlers that uh, wrestled his style. This is true. And Jason says your dad gave us a lot of great childhood memories. Mike would like to know your thoughts on possibly Dynamite going into the Hall of Fame. We saw that, that Davey went this year, and maybe you could give us your thoughts on Davey going in as well. Yeah, I was really happy for my cousins and Diana and, of course, for Davey. Um, I was sad I couldn't be there just with COVID and everything. It was too hard. I would have liked to have been there. I'm hoping that this just opens up the door and the opportunity for my dad to one day be in there as well, if it's as a tag team or by himself or maybe both eventually. So I'm hopeful for the future. And, yeah, it'd be great to do that together with my cousins, Georgia and Harry, and my siblings as well. It would be a great time. I don't know how much talk you ever had with your dad ever about wrestling, uh, if any, but legendary Dr. Rackpool is wondering what wrestler your dad would have talked about in a good light. Um, Harley Race. They were really good buddies, I think. And Bad News. Bad News Allen. I think those are probably two of his top, top friends and guys that he respected in the industry. Were you close with Bad News at all before uh, he passed away? Uh, not I'm, when I was younger and my dad was still here. I was close. We were close with their family and they would babysit me. So they lived out in Bear's Paw or Springbank. I can't quite remember. I think it was Springbank. And anyways, I just remember going to their house for sleepovers. Um, their son, AJ, is the same age as me or a year apart. I can't quite remember. And they had a pet pig and he thought he was a dog. He had a doggy door and everything. So that was my favorite part about going over there. <laughs> John wants to know if you watched much of the old uh, Stampede Wrestling days. Uh, no, I, I don't really just because for a while there it was hard to get a hold of. But I think it's all on the network now. But I do, when I come across it on Instagram and stuff like that, I will watch it. Yeah, because uh, you say you're an 80s baby, but you you would have been born in the late 80s, I'd imagine, right? 84. Okay. Yeah, so I guess Stampede Wrestling, the glory years, were pretty much over by the time you were able to really understand what was going on. Yeah, I would, would have just been a baby. I don't think I ever attended Stampede Wrestling. I kind of 
switched over to WWF by the time I was going to shows. Of course, with dark side of the ring, they focus on the dark side of wrestling, but is, is there some good memories you could share with us about your father? Yeah, I have lots of good memories. And of course, those stories were cut out of the dark side episode, which is fine. I expected that it is the dark side after all. It was hard to cram it all in in 45 minutes. So yeah, a lot of my positive memories were just being at home when he'd be home from wrestling on the road. We lived on an acreage, for example, and um, he used to cut the grass with a big tractor and tie up a sled behind it. And me and my brother would sit on it and give us rides around while he's cutting the grass, things like that. He always did fun things. Um, when we were, we, when we reconnected when I was older and dark side, it showed the first time we reconnected, but I actually went over four times. So kind of made it seem like I only went over the once, but I did go over four times. And each time I would go and I would leave, he would cry. And he would just be like, just go. Cause he didn't want me to see him cry. So I just showed that he really, he was human. He had a heart. He loved his daughter. He had emotions. And it was, it was really hard leaving him every time. Cause you know, England to Canada, it's a long flight, a lot of distance. Did you actually stay with him on his flat when you would go over there? I did. I think I stayed with him two times. Okay. Yeah. Now, you probably don't want to get into this too much, but Jacques Rougeau in the dark side of the ring claimed that the, the mafia story there was made up. One thing that I thought was... I mean, your dad is a pretty smart guy, and Dino Bravo was actually connected mm -hmm. to the mafia who passed that message along. Do you really think that your dad would take something seriously that that was just a, something that Jacques made up? Yeah, I believe it was true. Like, there's a dark side episode on Dino Bravo, so. Like yes, that. like I don't see how Jacques could, could say that when Jacques actually, or when Dino actually knew people in Montreal, and obviously yeah. he would have checked before passing that message along. I'm laughing it off now, saying it's not true, but of course it's true. Yeah, Mr. Bert Wayne would like to know if you would let your kids follow in your father's footsteps and allow them to pursue professional wrestling as a career. Yeah, I absolutely would. So I have two daughters, so that would be super cool to see if, you know, maybe they want to start off with gym gymnastics and work their way up. Um, I would absolutely support it. As far as your own professional wrestling training, who was it uh, that taught you? Or is it just kind of being around the business? Uh, I know you haven't actually had a match or anything, but yeah. you're obviously in it as a manager. Yeah, I think just growing up around it and watching it on TV. But of course there was always Bruce Hart and Ross Hart's always at our shows and giving me pointers and um, yeah, working with Teddy and Terry and my mom's always there supporting me and giving me pointers as well. So that's, that's about it. You have any uh, updates on what's going on with Harry? I know that there's uh, I know you probably can't say, but there's strong rumors that, NXT UK has interest in them. I actually, I don't know. Um, I'll be finding out with you guys if anything is announced. What about Ted? Is he back in Canada yet? Or is he, he's, I guess the last I heard he was in Florida doing something. Yeah, I think he's still in Florida. I haven't seen him for a while. Jonathan Hamilton wants to know if you've seen the Kickstarter documentary that was done about your father a few years ago. Yes, Matter of Pride, I believe. I'm yes. in that one, so I've definitely seen it, and I own it. What are your thoughts on that one? I haven't seen it yet. No, um, it's pretty good. It was you know, a lot of people telling stories, a lot of different wrestlers telling stories about my dad, but um, he didn't talk a lot at that point. That was after a stroke, so that's why they had to get so many other wrestlers involved. He would just kind of nod his head and be like, yeah, yeah. And um, like even they were asking him a story about breaking – John Foley's daughter's legs. And he was just like, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I didn't think it was very fair because he wasn't really able to communicate very well. But besides that, it was, um, I, I enjoyed the stories and it was good. And I like seeing my dad on there. It seems from your dad's book and even from Brett's book that John Foley and your dad were very close. And for those who don't know, uh, he was an old 
Stampede Wrestling manager. Did you ever meet him or do you have memories of him? I don't have memories. I would have been too young. I'm not too sure if I met him. Seems like uh, quite the character. I think there was the, the story that uh, your dad put like gas in the toilet or something because he knew that John <laughs> liked to smoke cigarettes while he was using the bathroom. Yes. There's my sister. Oh, there's your dog, your uh, cat there. Yes. What's his, what's the name? Chester. He looks like a lion. Very very fluffy. Very fluffy. <laughs> I guess the whole thing with with all of all of the heart children and grandchildren and cats is just based off of uh, Stu's love of cats. I assume. Yeah, uh, there was always cats. There was dogs as well. But even when I would sleep over at my cousin's, like Brett's house, so I'd have sleepovers with his daughter, Jade, they always had cats. They had a few dogs, but they always had cats. And at a point, we had to get rid of our cats when my sister was um, like a toddler because she had allergies. So I just was in love with the cats whenever I'd go to Brett's house. And as soon as I moved out, I got my own cats. And I've been crazy cat lady ever since. <laughs> How is Brett doing these days and what's your relationship like with him? He's doing really good. Um, I think he's enjoying sort of the re retirement life and being a grandpa. He has four grandkids and um, yeah, we see each other, maybe not super often, but maybe a couple times a year, especially during the pool season. They always have pool parties and barbecues. So looking forward to that coming up here soon, probably for Canada Day. Did you see the uh, Owen Hart Dark Side of the Ring? You mentioned that you've seen all of them. What were your thoughts on that? That one was really sad, obviously. Yeah, it was emotional, for sure. And just seeing, it's great that they got the kids on there because they haven't been documented a lot, or even Martha herself. So it was really great that they were able to do that. And it was well done. What are your thoughts uh, on the people that say that was all Vince Russo's fault and and put the blame on him when I guess even in that documentary, it was clearly an issue with, with the riggers. Yeah, I believe it was just a mechanical error. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to get into that. No, I, it's got, it's gotta be sad, but, but maybe you could share a good memory of Owen because I'm sure that, uh, you had plenty of contact with him over the years. I as your remember when he, yeah, when he died, I was like, we just saw him, you know, Sunday dinner, and he was so friendly and positive with all the kids. And that was my, like, instant memory from, like, the week prior. He was just, like, right in there with the kids playing. He was so goofy and fun and a good dad and a good uncle and just a good man. So that was my initial thought. Unusual question here. Mike wants to know if you ever met Doink when you were a kid backstage at any of the shows. I did meet Doink. How was that experience? Was it the uh, Matt Bourne Doink or the other guy? What are the millions of people that played no, it? I don't know. Now? I have no idea. I just I think Blade, uh, Brett's son, was obsessed with Doink at the time, so I can just remember that. Uh, race fan says, uh, do you think your dad suffered from CTE, uh, mostly besides his other health issues? I mean, he had to have had, you know, some brain trauma from all the flying headbutts and such, um, lived a life full of pain in pain constantly. And just, you know, he should have been in a wheelchair earlier than he was. So it was just slowly deteriorating his body and all the, the strokes. And so it was kind of a lot of things. That added up over time. Was the wheelchair directly related to wrestling or was there some other issue like that he had that would have put him in a wheelchair either way? No, just from wrestling. They had told him, I think 10 years before he was in one, like you need to get in a wheelchair and he would just refused because he's stubborn. Um, you know, and then it ended up, he did need a wheelchair, but it, it could have been maybe not as bad if he would have listened earlier. I see. Um, there's a few other questions on here. David would like to know your thoughts on Vince McMahon. Um, I mean, he's done it for so long, and it's, it's time to get him out of there. Let's let's be honest. <laughs> well, it seems like they might be selling, but if they sell, who knows? They'll probably still keep 
Vince in a position of authority there, I would imagine. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what happens. There's a fan on here that wants to know your opinion of Pamil Bacon. I don't know who that is. Neither do I. Is that food? <laughs> oh, it must be actually. I like bacon. I know I know this fan is from Texas, so maybe he just assumes that Canadians all eat the same type of bacon. Uh, Devin Leahy wants to know. Why didn't your dad come back to WWE in 1991 when Davey Boy did? And uh, what was your his relationship with Davey Boy after uh, he took the Bulldog brand himself? I know it was strained for a while. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they ever made up or not. They, but he they never made up. And I, my, so my dad went back to England at, at that time, and I think he had just come out of a few surgeries. So. He pretty much didn't wrestle much more after that. There was a few more matches in, in Germany and maybe Japan. And yeah, they, they had a falling out and they never reconnected, unfortunately. And I think a lot of that does have to do with distance. My dad was in England and Davey was in Canada or the US. So at times were different then too. You couldn't just pick up a cell phone or message someone on Facebook. So I think that had a lot to do with it. I think now maybe even with the distance with social media and stuff, they would be able to um, reconcile a lot easier. A few fans on here are saying that that is Canadian bacon, what Mark was asking about. Oh. And no, we don't eat that. <laughs> uh, I eat all bacon, so. There you go. John is wondering your favorite female wrestler and why. Favorite, of course, Natalia. Um, she's the boat. And yeah, I just love her. But uh, someone not family related, I'm loving Frankie Monet. Uh, she's a friend of mine. So she's in NXT right now. I'm really enjoying watching her every Tuesday. So yeah, definitely her. And I know you mentioned this last interview, but a few fans have been wondering your, your, fa your favorite singles and tag team match of your father's. Favorite singles match would be my dad versus Tiger Mask 1983. Um, was it the, the Sumo Hall show? That was the first ever five-star match um, labeled from Meltzer. So I really enjoy that match. And tag team match would be WrestleMania. Was it WrestleMania two or three? I always forget when they won the, the tag belts. I think it was two with Ozzy Osbourne yeah. because I think... Sorry, hold on. I pressed something. Okay, we're good. <laughs> okay, yeah. Two was the one where they won with uh, Ozzy. Yeah. What did he think about Ozzy managing them for that? I thought it was so cool. We actually watched that recently. Um, we just picked a bunch of random old matches we wanted to watch, my fiance and I. And he just, like, he doesn't really do anything. He's just there. He's just added character, and he's just so funny. He's so pumped. He's so into it. It's hilarious. Maybe uh, I forgot if I asked you this before, but I know your fiance is in a band, but he doesn't wrestle, does he? That's right. Yeah. He's a musician. Who is it that you manage? Do you have have someone that you usually manage all the time or is it whoever? The yeah, company I work with you? Heavy Metal. He's from Edmonton. And whenever he comes to Calgary, I work with him. Um, sometimes we have a star in Regina. David wants to know if your dad was friends with Hulk Hogan. Not to my knowledge, nope. Did you ever see his appearance on the A-Team? I did, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to go into too much detail on this, but someone was wondering what the falling out was between the Bulldogs. Um, yeah, I think it was... A little bit of jealousy, I'm sure. You know, Davey went on without my dad, and I'm sure that stung a little bit. Um, yeah, I'd rather not go, in, go into too much detail because I'm really prideful of keeping things very kosher and not talk negatively about anyone. So it's between them. It has nothing to do with me, and I'm really close with Davey's kids, so I'd rather not really be stuck in the middle. Yeah, and you were just just a kid at that point anyway. So you probably yeah. were too young to really know what the true details I know my dad were. Was bitter, for sure. Um, I know as the years went on, I think he had a lot of regrets 
and probably would change the way he did things, but he's human. I think he was bitter for a while there. And at one point, according to Brett's book, when Brett was champion, it was past um, your dad's prime, obviously, but apparently Brett even offered to, to give him a position with WWE. Yeah, not, I'm not totally familiar about that story, but I know even, I think it was Mick Foley offered to pay for my dad's back operation, like fly him to wherever he needed to be. And that was before he would have ended up in a wheelchair and he denied it. So there's a fan that wants to know if you could be on a show anywhere in the world, uh, where would it be and why? I really want to go on Jericho's cruise. So let's just say AEW on the, on the cruise. Cause that would be so cool to be like on a boat and under the stars. That's my goal. Mort Goldberg talent says your dad was very acrobatic. Was that something he taught himself or did he take formal lessons? Well, I can't remember now if he did gymnastics or anything, but I mean, he trained at a very young age with Ted Betley in uh, the snake pit. So maybe he learned a lot of that there. John says, why is your boyfriend waiting so long to marry you? <laughs> <laughs> it was just because of COVID. We were just making sure it was going to be over with. So COVID kind of. I think you have some fans out here. Someone says fiance, hell no. <laughs> um oh there's some some trolls on here i'll stay away from uh somebody's asking your opinion on chris benoit and could his death have been prevented yeah super super sad and unfortunate um that was probably one of the hardest dark side episodes to watch as well i think that yeah i mean ct again comes into play so if just protect your head more don't be doing the flying headbutts and I think it could have been prevented for sure. Jonathan Hamilton believes you could be one of the greatest women wrestlers of all time. Do you have any desire to actually get in the ring as a wrestler? I know you have, have kids now and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so your priorities are probably more on being a mother. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I'm already, I'm 37. So I don't know why I would start this late, but um Maybe I want to like do a few little things and just see how that goes. Have you actually had uh, any contact with Jericho since the last time we talked? You mentioned. I did. Yeah. He actually reached out to me He because he did the narrating on our episode and he grabbed my number from Natty and he texted me and just said, Hey, I just watched a rough cut of the episode. And I just wanted to let you know, like you were fantastic on it. And um, so, yeah, he connected to me through Natty and talked about the episode. And then after it aired, he asked me what I thought of it. So we've talked a little bit. So not no, no AEW talks yet, but you are having some communication. Oh, with no. COVID, it seems silly to even say I've been involved in wrestling because of COVID. It's been, it feels like it's been so long. So, you know, here I'll be going back to a few local shows and just start there and work my way up. Maybe you can uh, get a highlight reel to him once you get some new yeah. appearances on tape. Yeah, exactly. Arvin wants to know if your dad was friends with Rick Rude and would you like to see a dark side of the ring on Rick Rude? Of course, there there is the rumors of his controversial passing that some have confirmed to have been real that were close with him. Do you know, I don't even know his story. So now I'm curious. <laughs> I don't know that they were friends. So I'm not too sure. Maybe just backstage. Yeah, there there's rumors since he passed away at 40 that it was suicide due to... Uh, I know that this is something that exists because I know oh. some people that have taken it. Um, you can inject some sort of... Uh, it's not Viagra, but it's something into your... Mm -hmm your uh, area there to to give you uh, performance enhancing abilities such as Viagra and supposedly something went wrong there and that's what led to the suicide according to reports sadly but uh, oh, I'm surprised I haven't heard that <laughs> yeah no it's it's unfortunate um, smoke blazer wants to know 
your thoughts on your cousins, Thomas and Mark uh, Billington. They're wrestling over in the UK. Yeah. Um, so they're just getting back to shows as well. I think they either have one coming up or they just did one. Um, so I'm really looking forward to just seeing them grow and because I think they've been not wrestling for a year because of COVID. So that's really exciting that they're keeping the legacy alive. And I'm sure a lot of people would love to see you manage them at some point, maybe in the UK. We do have a UK promoter that watches this, World Pro Wrestling. Ooh, maybe there's yeah. an idea for yeah, you if you're sure. watching this. I guess you would have probably met them when you went over to uh, visit your father. Yeah, the last time I saw them, they were quite young. I mean, it's when, when did I last go? 2013. So. They were just little boys, but they were obsessed with wrestling, just watching it all the time and asking questions. And so I'm not surprised they became wrestlers. I'm not sure which one it is, but one of them looks almost the spitting image Thomas. of your father. Named, named after my dad. So Thomas looks just like my dad. Yeah, same haircuts, same build. If you look at those I old did, pictures. Yeah. Did you have that? Uh, I, I I can't imagine that you did, but your dad was known to, to obviously be a fighter. Did you have that uh, that side of you in you when you were younger that you wanted to fight people? Not at well? all. No. I think my brother was a little more like that. Um, there's a story. My brother accidentally, when he was little, killed a kitten because he grabbed it by the neck and like swung it backwards. And my dad was like proud because he was, well, that sounds bad, but he was like little Tommy. He called him little Tommy. <laughs> John says you're a classy, beautiful woman. Jerry says uh, he thinks you have an amazing mother and he wishes your family the best of luck. Now your, your mother, for those that don't know, I got it confused um, once, but your mother is, the uh, sister of Bret Hart's first wife, yes, Julie. Um, yeah. How did she become connected to your to your father? I never quite got yeah, that. Yeah, so story. Julie was dating Bret first, and um, Julie's my mom's older sister, and she was like a mom to her. So when Julie moved to Calgary, my mom followed her. She was only fifteen, I think, when she moved out here, and then they started going to wrestling shows, and it was a match with Bret. And my dad and my mom was like, who is that guy wrestling Brett? She thought he was so cute. And then they're really shy talking to each other at shows. They're pretty young. And um, yeah, they just started slowly talking. And then, but Brett said, you can't date her because she's my little sister. And then eventually they started kind of sneaking around and they were dating. That's how it started. How old would uh, your mother have been when they met? I think, she, I think she was 15 when they first met and they were dating at 16. The one good point that your mother made in that dark side of the rig, and I, f I fully agree with it, is why does Chris Benoit get more of a pass from wrestling fans than your father? You know, a lot of the time, he didn't do anything near. I, I know your mother didn't mention Chris Benoit yeah. by name, but like it was clear she was referring to him. Yeah. Your, your father did nothing at that level, but for some reason it seems like he doesn't get as much of a, a pass some of the time, which which I fully agree with. Yeah, I'm, so I'm just hoping that this will kind of open people's eyes up and, you know, we'll head towards Hall of Fame. There's a fan on here asking your thoughts on, on 420 because obviously that's legal in Canada and I know Smith was a big uh, proponent of it. 420, yeah. <laughs> it's legal, so go for it. There you go. Any memories of Smith? Uh, he was a he was a nice guy. He, uh, he was always at our wrestling shows, at Real Canadian Wrestling. His son, Matthew, wrestles on uh, the same promotion that I work for, so he was there every every show, always giving pointers. He, him, him as well. He was always giving me pointers as well. Who is this guy, by the way? He was out here around around maybe 2010, 2011, Steve Hart. Have you ever heard of this guy? He was claiming he was one of the Hearts. Uh, and I, I never could understand how he was related at all, but he claimed. Have you ever Steve, heard of this guy? 
I have no idea who that is. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I figured. Yeah. He was able to convince some promoters out here that he was he was somehow related, but I I guess in 2011 he would have been maybe in his 40s, and he was claiming to be <laughs> one of the Hart family. Oh, I don't know. I haven't heard about him. Yeah, I I, I imagine that it was a load of crap, but uh, it's just coming back to me now. But uh, but that reminds me, um, there was a fan that wanted to know earlier. Um, What's going on as far as uh, the next generation of, of, of hearts in wrestling? You mentioned Smith's son. Mm -hmm. Is there any others besides you and, and him wrestling around the Alberta area that are related to the hearts? Um, just some of Bruce's boys will make the occasional appearance, but they're not really full-time wrestling, but they have a wrestling ring in the backyard, so they're always like putting on practices and... Yeah, they do the occasional show, but they're not like as committed throughout the whole year. Funny question here. What are your thoughts on when Davey sported the braids? I keep telling Harry he should uh, go for that look. I love the braids. Yeah. Have you heard Harry's impression of your father, by the way? Yeah. A lot of hearts are really good at imitating anyone. Harry, Harry, Georgia, my cousin Lindsay, they're all so good at it. If if I had my way with Harry, he would speak in your father's accent as a wrestler and have the braids. I <laughs> think that would be funny. amazing. <laughs> if he just kayfabed everyone and that was his real voice. Harry and braids would be hilarious. <laughs> e. Kumore is wondering if you ever met The Rock at an early age. I haven't met The Rock, unfortunately. Um, I've met a lot of wrestlers, but that was like earlier before The Rock. So I love what, The Rock. I wish I met him. What would be your best memory of being backstage? I know for the longest time, and it probably is still like this whenever WWE comes to town, um, the Hart family was usually welcome back there, other than that brief period of time after the Montreal screw job when there was a lot of heat. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was always, I know I've mentioned this, I think last time, but I was always with Macho Man and Elizabeth. So that's one of my fondest memories, but also meeting Andre the Giant, which was not in Calgary though. That was actually in LA for, Rus was it WrestleMania? I can't remember what WrestleMania, 92, I think it was. And yeah, meeting Andre the Giant was super cool. Um, one of the shows, like a house show in Calgary, all the wrestlers went to Brett's after and had a barbecue and they were all playing with us. Like it was summer and we were having a super soaker water fight. So that's one of my fondest memories. And it was Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, um, I think one, two, three kid. And they filled up the super, so super soakers with milk and we're just squirting all us kids down. That's so gross. <laughs> we're all sticky of milk. But yeah, that was our life. Someone's asking what the wrestling scene is like in Alberta. I know the pandemic yeah. uh, is, is just finishing up, but uh, what companies are running Alberta right now? So pretty much only Real Canadian Wrestling has been running shows. And now that they're back up and running, I think they're doing every week um, because I think the number limit is still down. I'm not too sure what that looks like. So we were doing every two weeks, but because you can only have however many people right now, it's they're doing every week. So every like Friday is Calgary, every Saturday is Edmonton, and then the like Sunday they'll do little towns around there. Is there any compensation for Dark Side of the Ring? Uh, John Flower wants to know as far as financial compensation. I know Kevin Sullivan told me the reason he didn't do uh, Ben Wise was because they weren't offering him any money, and it's like for him, he's talked about that to death. Why would he want to go and do it for free when – yeah, someone's so making money. We were, we were paid, but it wasn't about the money for us. It was just about, I mean, my mom did the CNN interview back in the early 2000s. I can't remember what year that was. But, and it didn't exactly come across the way she wanted it to. She wanted to um, send a message about CTE and, you know, domestic violence and um, just seeing the early signs of it, and it didn't come across the way she wanted to at all. So she was really happy with the way Dark Side came out, came out, and um, yeah, so we're happy we did it. 
Jay Z wants to know if you ever met Vince McMahon in real life. I've met Vince McMahon. Yeah. What was he like? Uh, do you have? Was he just basically saying hi, or was there? Any yeah, just basically saying hi. I have a a really distinct memory of them at Owen's funeral. Like China was behind me, Triple H, and Vince McMahon, and my mom after like introduced me to them. And I was, they're all so big. I'm just staring up when I'm, you know, pretty young and small. So. Do you have any memories of, of Stu you could share with us? Yeah, I think he was, um, I mean, he was always wrestling. So he was usually down in the dungeon stretching someone, but he, or he'd be at the head of the table always and everyone would be surrounding him and he'd just be telling stories or he'd be in the kitchen cooking. He'd be cutting the meat up. So he was very hands-on family man. Um, but yeah, my biggest memory was I was scared of him pulling my ponytail when I was little. Cause he would just like tug on all the girls ponytails. So I'd always be hiding behind my mom's legs. Like don't pull my ponytail. Maxter or eighteen seventy eight wants to know how you found Wigan. I liked Wigan. I liked the shopping area. Now I can't remember what it was called. Oh, I don't know, but I liked it. There was a gym close to my dad's walking distance. So I was like, well, let's go to the gym. And they are a fan of my dad. Um, so that was pretty cool. He let us work out for free there. And it's cool seeing where he came from. And it's way different than Canada, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, I never understood the the showers in England, why they're so complicated. Like, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I remember being at the hotel, like, how do you use this thing? <laughs> yeah, it's like they're way behind in the times as far or, as that. And even like my curling iron and stuff, because you have to get a different plug-in so that it works. Yeah. So I was using that, curling my hair, and it like burnt my hair. Like the whole the plastic thing was falling off. So I kind of just gave up even curling my hair there. It's hard. It's hard traveling. Someone mentioned earlier that uh, you were married to a wrestler in the past. What I know he was just a low level wrestler, not uh, in WWE or anything, but how was it going out with a wrestler? I remember it was when I, I first reconnected with my dad. That was, that was when I first surprised him, like the story they told on dark side. And then I all of a sudden like was watching more wrestling and I just wanted to be like more connected to it. And I don't know, just have something to bond with my dad over. So I remember coming back to Calgary and talking to my cousin, Ted, and I was like, I want to date a wrestler. He had tried to hook me and uh, Jack Evans up before years ago. I think we were just like way too shy. Like I was right out of high school. He was really shy and I was shy, but I had a big crush on him. So anyways, I remember going up to Ted and being like, yeah, so like I want to date Jack. <laughs> and he was like, oh, he's like moved to Mexico. He's got like a, like a wife, like, I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, well, I want to date a wrestler. <laughs> so, it's like, who do you got for me? And uh, yeah, that's how it happened. I started dating one of the, the local guys and we ended up getting married and it didn't last very long, but it brought me closer to wrestling and um, my heart family. So it's, it's all meant to be in the long run. Very interesting. How are Ted's uh, sisters doing these days, by the way? They're really good. Yeah, uh, Annie is in... Florida and Angie is in Victoria. I've seen Angie quite a bit. She's been back and forth between Calgary and Victoria uh, through COVID. So we're doing good. Well, tell Angie uh, hi for me next time you see her. I yeah. used to be friends with her, but yeah, I think I she's in Calgary. Right now. What's she doing for work these days? Uh, I'm actually not really too sure. Yeah. Kenny wants to know your thoughts on Danny Spivey, who was uh, good friends with your father. I loved him. Um, see, again, I, I, I've never talked to him, didn't really know about him. I've just heard about him from my mom. So hearing their stories and how much they love my dad and that they were like, they seem to have quite a big bond that made me really happy. And I'd like to connect with him as well. Travis would like to know if you ever hung out with Hulk Hogan or Ric Flair's daughter. No, I haven't. What are your thoughts on uh, on being second, or I guess you're technically, I guess you're second generation. Mm -hmm. Is it is it uh, easier being in the business or harder? Like when you're out there managing, do people have greater expectations for you? I think it's easier because everyone just is very welcoming and 
you know, wants to tell you how you're like, they want to give you feedback on your match. And they just want to talk about the good old stories about my dad. And so I really enjoy being backstage and talking to anyone who wants to tell me stories. Uh, Mr. Mittak would like to know uh, if you would like to see Tom Hardy portray your dad in a biopic. I don't even know who Tom Hardy is. I know the name, but I'm so not like into movies very much that I, I don't even know what he looks like. I know that's pathetic. Smokey says, please manage your nephews. Someone's got to hook it up. Cousins. Yeah. I know that's not a cheap thing. They really want to come to Canada too, so that would be fun. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of wrestling going on in Alberta, so uh, maybe it'd be worth their while to come out for a few months. Yeah, for sure. Killian wants to know if you watch much of your dad's wrestling product later in life. I believe you have. Yeah, I have. Gregory wants to know your favorite WWE wrestler besides your dad. Probably The Rock. I love um, I love a good promo. Someone good on the mic. Did you see Paige's movie that The Rock put together? Yes, I did. I really liked it. Yeah, the uh, The Rock's promo, I guess, and it was probably my favorite part of the movie. Um, they It could have been a little bit more interesting, though, if they had actually... Uh, told like the real story of Paige. Yeah. But like uh, the later stuff. <laughs> yeah, like the controversy. She, yeah. She's so controversial. Like that that part's interesting, but they went more the kids route with the movie, I guess. Yeah. Where she was portrayed a little bit more innocently. But uh, I guess she's, she's British too. Her. What are your thoughts on her? Oh I love her. Yeah. She's one of my favorites. But yeah, I've, I've noticed she's been pretty quiet on social media lately. So what's going on? That's true. She made, uh, there was a big hoopla when they uh, first put those new rules into place about wrestlers and WWE on social media. She was one of the ones speaking out about it. Yeah. And we haven't heard anything about her for a while now, now that you mention it. Yeah. She's okay. David wants to know, would you accept a Legends deal on behalf of your father or a Hall of Fame induction? I think you already said yes Absolutely. for that. Absolutely, yeah. And I don't really know if they give Legends deals for people that have passed, but I guess sometimes there's royalty uh, royalties yeah. that go to the family, I would assume. Um, of course... Is there any video games that your father is in, uh, a fan was asking? Actually, I'm not too sure. Um, not that I can think of, but maybe. Yeah, because that's usually the big royalty payoff um, whenever they put a wrestler in a video game. I'm, I think not, that. Yeah. I'm not getting anything. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like 75 grand or something, Vader and Sid told me oh, wow. um, about video games. Uh, Ziggy Pop says, what's it like being the daughter of the greatest wrestler of all time? I'm super proud to be my dad's daughter. It's amazing. Yeah. Legendary says there should be a, a WWE produced Dynamite DVD. Yeah. It'd be cool to see like an actual biography done, like the full story. True North says, did any kids ever bug you about getting an autograph from your from your father all the time they still do <laughs> <laughs> maybe not my dad but like brett or anyone yeah that's got to be annoying to some extent it can be franklin uh wants to know your thoughts on the current wwe product i haven't been watching a ton um i really wasn't enjoying it during COVID because i didn't like the the TV monitors behind the wrestling. It was just too distracting for me. So I kind of haven't been watching lately. Yeah. To me, it's not as much the TV monitors, but the fake crowd noise when you know yeah. there's no crowd and you're I'm just looking at all the faces. Like, are they even like time? Is the timing right? Is, are they even live? I don't know. It's really distracting, yeah. but that's over with now. Now there's crowds again. Right. So that's really good. Um, I haven't been watching a ton, like I said, but I've been watching more NXT with Frankie Monet and a lot of, the, I like the NXT. Yeah. 
Um, someone wants to know if you play video games. I don't. That's why I don't know about the video games. There you go. Nadev says Tom Billington makes me proud to be British. That is awesome. Yeah, I had a lot of people reach out to me after Dark Side and say, you know, they were from a little town in England as well. And they saw my dad that he was able to make um, something of himself and that how they, he inspired them. And now they are a wrestler themselves or whatever it is that they do, whatever their goal was. So I'm really proud that my dad could do that for people. Someone's asking, what are you drinking in there? Is it water, coffee? Ice water. It's so hot. We're having a heat wave here right now. So I'm in my basement. It's nice and cold. And yesterday we were at a birthday party outside all day in the sun. So I need to stay hydrated today. I guess, are your kids from your first marriage? Uh, no. No. Um, I wasn't married. My first daughter, I wasn't married to her dad. But uh, the second one is with my fiancé. Oh, okay. Um, as far as uh, there's a lot of comments here of people putting over your father and someone's asking, were you ever uh, an athlete in high school or anything in any sports? No, I never was. And this is the interesting thing is I lived sort of a sheltered life and we all, we lived in a, on an acreage. So like the, the houses were really far apart and to, to go do a sport or anything. It just, I don't know. It didn't, I, we just didn't do it. Um, and I was really, really shy growing up. So I think that I always wondered if I did try, could I have wrestled? Maybe I could have, I just never really tried. Some of the fans are saying your dad's best work was in Japan. Others are saying stampede. What was, uh, in your opinion, your dad's best work, what company? Probably, that's kind of a hard question, but probably Japan. Just, I love the the Tiger Mask matches, so. But I like I like seeing a lot of the stuff where he's younger and fresh and stampede wrestling. And I think Japan, though, is probably what he's most proud of. Someone's asking if your sister is married. My sister is also engaged. You guys have a lot of fans. <laughs> Gregory wants to know, in your opinion, who had the coolest gimmick of all time? Uh, he would say The Undertaker. What, what, in your opinion, is? You're probably right with The Undertaker. Just that entrance. It's like a half hour entrance alone. And I remember seeing it live and being so scared and scared of Paul Bearer, too. So they had it all going on. Thomas would like to know what aspects of British culture do you like and dislike? Um, I just, I don't know. I love the accents. I, I know it's not really the culture, but the accents are just amazing. Uh, the food, like the fish and chips are delicious. Um, I don't know. I think it's sort of, it's simpler over there. Like they, they like to take the, the train and stuff like that. I think that's really fun. Yeah, the only issue I have with the trade stations there is maybe it's just the ones I went to, but you have to pay to use the bathrooms. Oh, like in the like, What the hell? You got to pay to use the bathroom. I mean, the sports too. They're really into their sports, like their soccer, their football, you know, the wrestling. I don't know if you ever watch Glow, but someone's asking you if you're sad that Glow was canceled. Yeah, we did watch it. I am sad because it was like a cliffhanger at the end there. And then my friend um, Frankie Monet was going to be in the next season. So I was really excited to see you know, what was going to happen and what her role was going to be. I should ask her because they did some filming. So I should ask her what was what was going to happen. Yeah, and she is a great wrestler. And there's yeah. there's actually a lot of... Her match is on this channel for anyone that wants to watch. Uh, Frankie's uh, real name was Taya. And she is, didn't she train with Lance Storm in Calgary? Is that how her, you know? her real name is Kira, but she, and then her wrestling name before in Mexico and stuff like that was Taya Valkyrie. And then now in WWE, she's Frankie Monet. And she's Canadian, right? So she was. She's from Victoria. So yeah, she was training here with Blant Storm. And so I'd, I'd watch her. She was wrestling with PWA wrestling. And I was a big fan then. So I knew she was going to, she was going to make it. Is PWA still around? 
They are. They just they haven't been doing shows since COVID, so I'm not sure when they'll start up. But who were some of your dad's uh, closest friends in the business? Some fans are asking. Yeah, definitely Harley Race. Um, he was close with um, Ultimate Warrior. Um, I mean, Brett, of course, like the Hart Brothers. David, uh, or sorry, Mark wants to know your favorite WrestleMania. Um, I like WrestleMania three because I liked when they came out in those little rings. I just thought that was so cool. <laughs> and it was such yeah. a runway, so it's like, why not get a ride down to the ring? Yeah, I thought that was cool, too. I remember always hoping they would bring that back. I think they brought it at WrestleMania six, too, but then they stopped. Uh, ha ha Geo wants to know, do you think the similarities between Chris Benoit and dynamite kid were crazy? RIP to both. Uh, he's been pulling for both families. Uh, I mean, I think they just had similar wrestling styles and body builds. So not that crazy to me, I guess if you're, if you're short in stature and you want to build yourself to look a certain way, you can do that. So I think that's what Chris did. Lombardi 1969 wants to know if you ever met Mark Rocco. He was the first black tiger. No, I didn't. He was British, right? Yeah. And I think he, I don't know if he passed away or not, but I remember Steve Regal said something about him recently. Yeah. I think he passed away recently. Someone wants to know your favorite song right now. My favorite song. Um, Michael Grant and the Assassins, Nightmares, or Anthem of Us. That's my song of the week right now. Harmarsh2 says Dynamite Kid is a playable character in one of the newer WWE video games. Well, there well you, go. You, you and your mother should find out what happened to the royalty for that. No kidding. Uh, Jonathan wants to know if WWE ever contacted your father after he retired in 96 for anything. I don't think so. Someone asked earlier, oh, here's the question. Mark Simmons wanted to know if your family has ever been invited to Japan for any ceremony for your father or anything like that. No, I had one guy talking to me about coming to do a wrestling show, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm so into that. And then nothing ever happened, so... I'm hoping actually one day that that happens. That would be really cool. Dr. Rack pull is wondering your thoughts on the ultimate warrior. I'm pretty, I think your father was actually friends with the ultimate warrior. Yeah. I'm a fan of him. Um, I, I was a fan of the character. Uh, Mr. Metak says, are you a fan of Vampiro? I I don't remember them. Um, someone says their father was just asking about the Bulldogs. Uh, last fan question I'll ask. Thanks to all the fans for your questions. Uh, do you have any stories when you were back stage at WWE back in the day? You've told a few of them now. Um, any others? Yeah, I can't particularly remember a lot of memories. I, yeah, just just kind of seeing everyone in the locker rooms, I can vividly remember it and coming through the back, like where the trucks would drive through, they would just be open like a garage door and we'd just walk through there. That's how we got in. Uh, so I this a funny story about my sister. I'll just tell this one, I guess. She had a crush on Matt Hardy. Oh no, it was Jeff Hardy. She had a crush on Jeff Hardy. And so my mom thought it was Matt Hardy. So she was like, Oh, this is my daughter, Maris, and she's like, she's in love with you. And then my sister was mortified after. She was only like 11 or something. But she's like, that's the wrong brother. <laughs> she was so mad. That is absolutely hilarious, actually. <laughs> uh, I have to ask this one because this is actually a good question. Why was your dad never in WCW? Because it seems like he could have got a job there, actually, if he oh, just the injuries. I think I don't think I don't think he really dealt with the injuries and healed properly. So wrestling kind of just ended abruptly for him. 
Did he have a favorite Japanese food over in Japan that you were aware of? No, my mom said he didn't really enjoy the food there. So he always just wanted to come home. He wasn't really into the sushi and the rice. And he was more of a meat and potato kind of guy. So he just wanted to come home and have my mom's home cooked meals. And the snake burgers. I saw, I saw Harry uh, posted a video of Tiger Mask eating a snake burger and they showed how it was cooked and it was like, and that's they what skinned it alive versus home, like, right? why didn't they just kill it? Yeah. Yeah, he showed me that because I had a pet snake at the time. And I'm like, yeah. no, I can't watch this. Yeah. It's like, why didn't they chop the head off before skinning it? It's like, let's just make this the most painful as possible for the, the poor snake. I am on 2% on my computer. I'm going to die. Okay. Well, we did. We did. We went an hour. So thanks a lot. I really appreciate okay. it. Uh, you want to just tell fans where they can follow you to, to close this yeah, off. So at Bronwyn Jewel on Instagram and at Dynamite Doll 84 on Twitter. Um, we do have our Dynamite Kid t-shirt store on Pro Wrestling Tees. And we're going to be starting some new t-shirts with uh, Wrestle Merch Central, which is in the UK. So it's like Pro Wrestling Tees in the UK. So watch out for those coming out soon. We have a few figures that we're doing with Junk Shop Dog. Um, that's really exciting. Follow them on instagram or twitter and they have a cool doll coming out soon and yeah more things coming soon just stay tuned great well i really appreciate it hope to uh to run into you in person one day and i'll i'll let you close this off with whatever you want to say to the fans i just really appreciate everyone's support during this um it's been a pretty hard time with covid and then of course dark side coming out but everyone's response to us has been so positive and we really appreciate it just trying to keep my dad's legacy alive and get you know the, all the merch going that we can so thank you for your support and uh, we look forward to seeing you really soon thank you for watching the hannibal tv please like